Hi Stampin' Friends! Tonight we're going to use the Frosted Gingerbread um, stamp set and dies. Um, this is a, has a lot of possibilities and um, I just kind of wanted to show you um, some of them tonight. Um, one thing that it does is it cuts out um, a lot of the pieces out of the designer series paper. So you can see that this is the same star. Well, it doesn't actually have a stamp for the star, but this is a star that it has a die for. Um, like here, I've done it in gold and here in the white. So you can see that this is a really useful little die and um, it has a cutout for the bell, the ornament, and the snowflake. And I think you can use it with the paper or without and have a lot of great possibility. So I wanted to show you first a card that I made. This is going to be available on um, an online class or an extra class, depending on where you live. Um, now this one has cherry cobbler and this cherry cobbler shiny ribbon. There you can see, oh, it's so sparkly. And then the gold foil and the gold foil star. And I did some embossing on the back here. And you can see I've used the festive and bright um, sentiment. So you can just kind of see that, you know, you can't even really tell that this is about gingerbread, in my opinion. Um, so it looks good even if you don't do that. Think how pretty it would be with the Pacific Point or um, the, what is the midnight, misty moonlight. Um, if it were on those, it would really pop with silver, some things like that. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started. The first thing that I did is I got um, got out this, the sentiments. There are so many sentiments with this um, that, I mean, you're the icing on my gingerbread. I mean, just a lot of fun things. And then this, my pro only problem was I kind of wanted to heat emboss with Craft White and... Um, Craft White ink and clear. I thought that could have been pretty. This would be gorgeous. And any of these would be really pretty in gold. I saw someone um, emboss this in gold and um, kind of do the same thing that I had done, but with blues instead. Um, so that is a fun way to do it. Another possibility I wanted to show you is I really think we all need some of this Simply Elegant trim if we don't already have it. Because this is perfect to put in these holes, like in the ornament. It has a little hole and then you can stick it down there. So that makes a really cute, um, you could make an ornament out of this. You could cut several of these and do the thing where you score it in the middle and glue them together. You just need a like a brand new um, green capped mono multi glue to glue those together. I don't know if you've seen those before. I'll try to make one of those for the blog post, but you could also plant them on here and that might make it easier to do the folding and um, make it into an ornament. So I think that that is a really cute look. And um, one thing about the um, the ideas of using colors that are not necessarily in the paper, you could um, layer this like this and then I would probably need to cut another one here. And then we have so many uh, you know, it's always one color or another that we don't have anything um, to match. We used to not have a lot of pool party. Now we have a lot of nice pool party ribbons. So, um, let's see, would the ribbon work for a spinner? Yes, it would work on a spinner card. Um, the only thing you might want to do on a spinner card is um, sometimes dental floss or um, some, I actually have a specific thread that I use for my spinner cards. Um, a lot of people have been cutting like a big circle and then having this be the spinner inside. You know, you wanna make two back and forth. Um, we've done that before with, uh, really recently with a snowflake, but um, any one of these would be great for a spinner. So it could be really cute. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is how great the, these bells look with two of them for a wedding card. That I saw that and I thought, ooh, that would be so cute. Another possibility, if you don't wanna deal with all of these little pieces, you can also use, let's see, I'll try to pretend this is a layer on a layer. You could also, whoops, that's messy, there we go. You could also put this on here with your happy holidays. And um, again, adding this ribbon because it's got both colors, that could be a really cute idea. And then on this, I would wanna go ahead and, and make a bow out of my 
um, silver twine or silver cord, whatever you want to call this. Um, and I think that would add to it quite a bit. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think a thinner, um, a thinner thread would work better for a spinner. But you, it, you may end up liking this, but I think it's a little bit, um, I think maybe with time it might, um, become a little bit annoying to you. Okay, so then, so you could put that on the top, and um, I just think that would be super cute and super easy to put that on there. And then the other thing I wanted to show with this, let's see here, to show if you put, if you use these, well, I guess you would probably do this. If you use these as a mask, that also looked really pretty. Um, just kind of making it look like, okay, now let me try to explain. So like you do this as a mask and then emboss it with the um, evergreen embossing folder. And then that way it kind of looks like they're in the tree. So I'm gonna see what I think about that. And it might be easier to do the evergreen embossing holder, folder and just put these guys on. I think that is totally possible that that might look better. So that's that idea. Oh yeah, this is what I wanted to show this as well. This is supposed to be probably icing, but I think it looks just as great as just a little piece of trim. So if you were going to um, use this color, I think that I love the white and the blue, the kind of a Tiffany blue. <clears throat> okay, now I wanted to show you that there is a stamp that you can stamp your little peppermints, and then there's a die that cuts out all three of them at a time. So let's see here. It's I'm trying not to get red on everything because this is super messy. Um, but this is the stamps. It has the three, and so like, let me lay them where they would be so that you can see what I'm talking about. Sorry my voice is, voice is gravelly. Still got a little allergy thing going on. Okay, so like you stamp it like this, and they're attached so that you can cut them out a lot easier. And so that saves some good time. Um, so this looks really nice with some of the papers, I think. So like you could just put, you know, some peppermints on here. And for a lot of your little treat boxes and little um, cutesy kind of um, trinkets and, um, you know, tic-tac boxes, things like that, I think these really add. So just something to consider there. And then I wanted to show you these. I'm sure you've seen these as you've been sitting here. Um, I was trying to figure out if it made more sense to do them like this. Like, see how that, like you can layer them on top of each other. So I kind of think that is kind of a more fun look. And I was thinking how pretty it would be in some of our, uh, either Magenta Madness or the Polished Pink, um, to give it kind of that with the, with our uh, Granny Apple Green. I'm, I'm dying to do that because I think that would make a really cute card and kind of give it that kind of Candyland or, um, kind of kid sort of Christmas look. But those put together make a really cute look. But you could also just put them on top of the red circles that you can cut out. And that might be easier to adhere to your card at certain times. So I really wanted to highlight that with you just so you could see how cute that is. All right, then the next thing I wanted to show is a fun fold that we have probably done before if you've been with me for a long time. But this is a pocket card. So it is, of course, 11 inches long and four and a, four and a quarter inches wide. So you can see there. It is scored at one and a quarter. And if you wanna think of it from this direction, yeah, one and a quarter, and then it's one and a half, I'm sorry, it's scored at one and a half and at five and a half, so that we have half size and it's ready to go in an envelope. So as long as you don't put too terrible much on this layer here, this will still ship um, or still mail for a good price, for a regular price. Then I wanted to show you that when you're doing this, this is only three inches wide, which because this is six by six paper, it's wonderful to have it only be need to be three inches wide because then you can get two from each sheet. So there you can see what I was thinking there. 
One thing I want you to see on Monday is it has trees with it too. Um, but I went ahead and cut that because I really liked how this looked as far as looking like icing. Kind of, you know, it's baked in the oven. It's got some little, little brown patches over here. And then it's like a little icing plaid on there. So then you just need your inside piece. Your inside piece is five by three and three quarters. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this one together. I hope that's not too boring, but I'll do that in just a second. And you can slide it down in there. We may wanna go a little bit smaller, but um, this one will work if you use a narrow ribbon. I'm gonna, I mean, a narrow um, adhesive. So you could use your green mono multi and just be sure to stay in a straight line. Um, our tear tape is a little wide for me. It's, it's kind of wide. So I think I'll probably just cut this down just a little bit. Let's see, we're at three and three quarters. So I'm gonna go down to three and a half. I'm just gonna use this real quick, three and a half. And then I've already stamped my inside because I had quite a time Real red gives me trouble. Does anyone else? Um, I have a, quite a time when I'm stamping with real red. I think you can see it's all, all over my hands. I just, yeah, I'm wild and silly. So I may have gotten these too close, but we'll see if I can get this down because this is going to be our layer on here. We don't want it to be the entire um, three and a half inches. I'm going to try to take half off this side, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get quite half off this side. But at this point, this is three and a quarter. That's what we're going for. I think that's about as small as I can get it. Maybe a little smaller on this side. So then what I wanna do here is mount it across the bottom. And I've used the sentiment that says, sending peppermint kisses. I love the year of the icing to my gingerbread, but that might not be one that you'd necessarily put on a Christmas card. Okay, there we are. I'm gonna line that up at the bottom. I just wanna corner around this. Now you don't have to do this. Um, you may think it looks better to not corner around, and I will not be offended. There we are. And then, now that I've made this a little smaller, I feel confident to be able to use my tear tape. Now, you want to put your tear tape on this piece. Oops, you also need to corner around first. Let's see, what does Shauna say? Love the pocket card. Something easy but fun. Yes, easy but fun. Yeah, it's something that you're not used to seeing all the time. They were really popular, um, oh gosh, several years ago. I think I made tons and tons of them. But I like to just occasionally bring some of those things back because they... Um, sort of get fresh over time, it seems like. Okay, so now I've got, I may wanna do that again. I'm not sure I like that one, I didn't quite catch. Yeah, that's better. Got that little piece off there that made all the difference. Okay, so when you're doing this, you wanna put this on the side here. You don't wanna put it on this side because you might go up too far. Make it easy on yourself and just put it on this side. So as close to the edge as you can without going off. Are. And when you're doing this, the only thing you could do that would be weird is to um, get the top stuck before the bottom and have like a have it be curved or something. So just be careful to go from the bottom to the top as you're sticking this down. There we are. Okay. So then this piece, I thought I wanted to corner around it as well since I corner around the other one. A little bit of mess on that. I don't know what my problem was. So, got to remember to not do both sides. I want to do this edge and I want to do this edge. Don't want to do anything weird. Get myself messed up. I don't think I quite got that. I think I didn't hold it. Okay, there we are. All right. And of course, I guess I should tell you this piece it is one and a quarter by, of course, four, so it's gonna layer on here. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm going to try to get it fairly even. And it's going to be a little bit funny with the corner rounder pieces. It's not going to be exact, but I still like the way it looks just for kind of something different. And if you want, you could corner round these up here. You could even corner round these, but I, I think these top pieces will probably be where I stop. I do like this corner rounder. Um, at first I was like, oh, do I really need that? But it really is fast, so I do like it. Okay, so now at this point, I really wanna use some ribbon. So I can consider whether I wanna use white or red or, you know, I guess if we, I don't know, if we could use some white and color the white and uh, use the granny apple green. But you can see how this just slides right in. And I wanted to put a little bit um, of decoration on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and consider what kind of, um, and the only reason this looks crooked is because I haven't got it in the container exactly even. That's that's not the problem, it's, it's fine on that. So let me get some red. I think I've got some red ruffle ribbon here. I think that could be really cute and striking. So you can either tie this around or you can do the thing we do with um, our ribbon and tuck it under. I think that's what I'm gonna do today. So I'm gonna use a piece of tear tape on both sides. So I'm gonna wrap this around here. Just kind of thinking, I think I kind of want it up a little bit at the top. You could have it all the way up at the top. That might be cute to you, but I think I'm just gonna put it down. Well, actually I was gonna put one of these guys on there. So let's consider, do we think that that looks better tucked under? Oh, I kind of like that. Do you like that? I think it's kind of cool. So I'm gonna put this right here. I'll just wrap it around. And I wanna be careful and not stick this down yet until I'm happy with how it looks until I've got this, um, this guy stuck under here. So one good thing about doing this like this, you can just tuck it under here and use a piece of your um, tear and tape and stick it down that way. So that's just another um, plus about using it under a flap like this. It, you don't have to use the little tiny pieces, you know, little tiny bits of glue or glue dots or whatever. Um, you can just go ahead and um, put that under there. Now I want to always remember to center this side to side. Um, I don't want to have, I think I do want a want to have, well, maybe not. Yeah, maybe like, maybe I like it like that. Yeah. Um, so you want to kind of have it centered side to side, but you don't want it um, to go down too far. So that's going to be something for me to kind of play with and work on. Let's see, I think I have this a little long, but I can always tear it again. It's nothing says I can only tear it once. All right. that. Scoochy scooch. I will have to see if I have this anywhere close to straight. That'll be interesting. See. A little bit showing on this side. Teeny tiny bits. Let's see. All right. Sorry, I've not got a whole lot to say here. But just kind of trying to get that right on there. And then you just want to tuck these guys in on the edges so they don't stick out. And then I think we're ready to just stick that down. Then we just need to take our scissors. And, and this, let's see if I can show you what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm not cutting it straight. I'm kind of curving it up. And um, just so that I can keep the curve that's in the um, little design there. And then I'm just gonna curve. Gosh, I don't, I, sorry, I can't show you very well, can I? Sorry about that, there we go. So there you can see, that's what I was going for, just to make it look like it's kind of curved up there on the edge. And I didn't quite get it in exactly the right spot over here. Didn't quite get it centered perfectly. So on this side, it'll just have to kind of be like that. Kind of also should have scooched it up just a little. Might have been better. 
But basically, you just don't want any little pieces going some strange direction on there that you've where you've cut it. Okay, so let's pretend I have that exactly like I want it. Oh, I didn't put this under there, guys. Spangins for me. Oh, that doesn't look good with that anyway. Okay, I'll use a different paper. Maybe this paper. Oh, that kind of like that. I just need to cut it down. My point was, using this under here, you really didn't need to use this, but I wanted to. So anyway, maybe cut this down to, of course, still four wide, and this was four by three. I'm gonna cut it down to two and a quarter and see, or two and three quarters and see if that's enough. I don't think it is. I think I need to go two and a half. There we go. Let's see. Nope, need to go two. That'll probably be too much. I better go one. I better go two and a quarter. There. Oh, I like that. Kind of hits it right at the right spot. So there we are. And then up here, I want to kind of decorate. Now, what you could do is stick this on, just kind of like that. Let's see, try to pull it out to show you. You could just stick it on like this, and people, I think, would be using it like this. They would know that you are to pull it out. That Just putting something there makes them realize. You can put ribbon. You can put um, just a little, little um, piece of... Um, some kind of a little embellishment that looks big enough that makes them gets kind of gets their interest. It makes them realize that they need to pull up on the card. So if I were going to use this one, I would just go ahead and add some peppermints to the top here. Let's see, where's the other little one? There it is. And possibly just as many as I could. Now, you might also want to, if you didn't put it on the inside, you could put that up here as your sentiment and then um, put one of the other ones, like Happy Holidays or something, inside. But like this, when you pull it up and it says Sending Peppermint Kisses, I think that's kind of perfect. So that's just my opinion on that. Now, the paper also has red and green um, peppermints. So you could put a couple of those on there and they would look really good since I've used so much of the red and, of the um, old olive and the real red um, papers. That kind of adds a little more to it, makes it look a little more peppy. So you might just, you might even do it like that and then use the rest of these guys or something. Um, I really think it needs a white bow up there. So let's find my white. And for once, I'm not going to color this. Can you believe it? It colors so nicely, but today I'm just gonna, just gonna do this with the white. Just tying a quick little bow. Oh, I got it twisted, guys. Okay, there we are. Okay, that all done. Okay, back to this. Um, I just think a little bow maybe right in the center could be really cute. You would also, I think, it would look really cute to just kind of continue your peppermints on. Just kind of, you know, randomly put them here and there. Possibly make a little, little peppermint spot right here. Or you could do like we said earlier where we're putting these together and put a different kind of peppermint on there. I can't decide which one I like better because they're both really cute done either way. Those may not be mates. No, they are Okay, so you could just like put one of those on there. Super cute. Um, so I kind of feel like I'm sort of finished with this. I'm sort of happy with it. Um, I might put another stamp, another stamping of peppermints in here or maybe some other little embellishments. You don't want to get too much on here because you want it to be able to slide neatly in and out of the container. So, or the, the pocket. So anyway, um, certainly when you're, when you've done this, if you would rather, you can put some of these guys on here. Um, have you considered how nice and easy it is putting these on here and it looks just like a gingerbread? Um, this is the cinnamon cider and it matches the paper when you use it. And I really like how neatly um, these layer on here. So you could use a couple of them. You could use the star and the... Um, snowflake and the bell 
and the, let me see here if I can find this. I, I can't find my snowflake. Oh, here it is. There we are. So what it does is it cuts out the outline and then you can also cut out the more intricate looking one. So here's our snowflake. The snowflake is really pretty. I think it may be the best one. So you can see how neatly it layers on there and it just really looks like a cookie. I'm considering doing a stamp -a stack I'm considering doing some stamp -a stacks that people could do if they don't want to be here as well. If they could, um, maybe using the celebration paper. So that's my, um, my next thing after getting class ready for this month. So there you could do that. I, mean, I do think that these guys do need a ribbon at the top of them because I think that they look more like they're not cookies. But um, anyway, you can see here that there's a variety of ways to use this. These, these are the memories and more um, note cards and envelopes. So the, the note cards are cinnamon cider and the envelopes honestly are craft. Um, but I still think that they coordinate nicely. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it's as big of a color variation when you're, you know, when you pull it out of the card, it doesn't, you don't say, oh, that doesn't match. So, but anyway, just fair warning on that, that this is cinnamon cider, um, done with cinnamon cider and this is craft. Um, and this is our little memories and more pack and it has a lot of great things. Okay. It has a couple pages of this with the mittens, and it has these um, spatulas, and these are all supposed to be kind of like cookies, but they're shiny silver, so they don't have to be cookies. So it gives you a couple pages of that, and I think I've already taken this apart, so I apologize if you can't really see it. And it gives you some cards that you could use for scrapbooking, or um, you could use them for making a little cookie recipe, I think. So it gives you so many of the same one that I think it would be really easy to do this. And this is one that is actually already made for a cookie recipe. Now, if you don't wanna do a cookie recipe, like a recipe cookie exchange, the backside is gorgeous. And just think how pretty that would be, putting a little bit of that on the card and then using your white um, snowflake cut out. Uh, maybe you know, put a circle of red under, let's see, where's my circle of red? There we are. And that makes a really good look. So just, you know, it's easy to use these even if you don't have, if you don't wanna do a cookie exchange. Oh, I should tell you the back side of this one. It's just a bunch of green circles. It may not be the most exciting. So then we have several of these guys. Let's see, we have one, I think it's six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so if you had, you might wanna get two packs if you had several people coming over. And then wishing you a Merry Christmas. Um, this one to me looks really like a card. Um, then the back side is just the stripe. So I think that one would look good layered on here. Or you could go ahead and you would have to cut this with scissors because it is bigger than the, than the die. Um, but it would look really nice layered on there as well. And the back side of it I showed you. And then we got one. We got the other pack of the thing. It comes with two of each of these. But then it says Merriest Christmas, and then it says your friendship makes the season sweeter, and then yet another one of these. So there's six in each one of these. And then um, these little guys, I put those um, when I was playing with this, and I don't know where the card ended up. I apologize. I'll show you on Monday. Um, I put these in the center of the snowflakes like that. Not these snowflakes so much, but these ones that, that don't have anything in the center. I thought they looked cute there. I really don't know if they're supposed to just be cookies or what. But here is the other size of this little things. You have both a silver and a black um, cooling rack. And um, what I did on this was I cut it in half this way. And then I used my little um, mitten and I used my sentiment to block where it was cut in half so that you couldn't see that it was cut in half. And then I put my tiny cookies and my spatula on this. And it made it, um, made you, made it, you get a little more out of this. You can get 12 out of that if you cut them in half and use it that way. So then this one says sugar and spice and everything nice. And then we've got the back that's super cute. And this might be a way to use it with your paper and you know put this on here. That could have been really cute in there as a layer. Then this is memories in the making. So this would be perfect for uh, taking pictures of your, your um, cookie work that you might be doing. And then this um, zigzaggy kind of um, little puff ball print is really cute. 
And the last one is made with love. So you can put that on your cookies and um, then you can use the stripe if you don't need to label your cookies. So I just thought that that was a really fun and different kind of a memories and more than they've had in the past. Um, so I kind of wanted to show you how different it was. Um, I'm assuming it'll be, I'm, I'm trying to sit here and think if I look to see if it was on back order, but I can't even worry about that anymore because with the global shipping situation, it's just going to be going on back order all the time and all that craziness. So I just, if I don't show you, then you won't get to see it if I, if I don't do it when it's timely for me. So anyway, um, I hope that you will try out this set if you have it or consider it if you don't, um, because I think it is a lot of fun to use and I'm, I'm thinking that it's pretty easy as well because it, it came together pretty nicely. Um, I still want to try using it with various colors other than just the um, cherry cobbler and the pool party. I was thinking it would look good with purples. or um, And I also saw one where they did a watercolor background um, on this, you know, just kind of with the smushing up your watercolors. And then they used the snowflakes, and it was very striking as well. I'm sure you can imagine, you know, these purples and blues and then snowflakes as if it's just kind of right there. So... Anyway, I thought this was very useful, and so I hope that you find this set to be the same. I appreciate you all watching, and I hope that you have a great evening and a great weekend. Bye-bye!